Hi, this is Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. I um, It's 12 o'clock and I'm only just grabbing my camera for the first time today. I have been out running around, taking care of animals, checking out the dimensions of the metal parts, uh, considering how I'm going to build the wind turbine tower because we now are in the windy season and that's valuable energy that I'm missing out on. So the wind turbine tower is now a high priority on the list. I'm going to go into town in a while here and, and see if I can get some bolts for that. Uh, see if I can get the, uh, the wind turbine up in the air. I won't be able to get it hooked up though until payday because I'm going to need the, I'm going to need some wire. So I'll have to wait a few days, but it's going to be a week until payday. But I can at least start working on the tower and get that going and then put up the wind turbine when I get the wire. So i am been planning on that. I'm also looking at batteries to replace the ones that I have. I have someone who is helping me to get a new battery bank in the tiny house on wheels to replace the golf cart batteries I've been struggling with all this time. So I spent all morning calling around and researching about batteries. So uh, been a busy day, although I haven't had the camera in my hand, and I've got some good news. See the blinking light on the charge controller? I am in equalize mode. Equalize mode, that means I am putting a little bit higher voltage into the batteries, 14.7 volts, and going to boil off the sulfation on the plates. This is a once in a month thing that happens regularly with the solar charge controller automatically and hopefully that will help these batteries come up a little bit higher in uh, in their capacity so going over 14 and a half volts puts them in equalized mode and boils off the sulfation on the plates whoops cloud went over now I'm back into MPPT that's a bummer that's the thing it's hard to stay into equalized mode here very long with, well, I don't know, it's hard to say, 11.4 amps, I'm not sure why, but it flipped out of equalized mode. But it's hard because with clouds passing over and variable, well, there, there it goes back into equalized. I guess it knows what it's doing. It does, it knows best what it needs to do. So that hopefully will help the batteries. We'll see. It's a partly sunny day and I'm getting some nice current coming in. Good afternoon, it's Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project. Having a nice uh, afternoon coffee break. Baby cat crawling around at my feet. Baby cat, psst, come here. Come say hi. Come on. Yeah. I, uh, first of all, want to thank everybody who supported the Off-Grid Project through various means and those who have purchased a t-shirt in the last um, what was it three four weeks I want to say thank you everybody who has uh, done so I hope you enjoy your t-shirts I'm excited and anxious to get mine that's for sure the uh, the hoodies especially look really nice so uh, I'm gonna wear them around everywhere I go they should be shipping around Christmas time so keep your eye open for your t-shirts and again, thank you everyone who has supported in any way, shape, or form, whether in the comments, or financially, or through buying the shirts, or packages and gifts. I want to thank you all for being there. Uh, the comments and the, the advice from the comments, they really do help me. I'm sure you've seen a lot of things here have changed based on suggestions and ideas from people. But unfortunately, I cannot respond to every comment there's just too many and I'm one person and so if I don't get to you please do forgive me same goes with emails I've got last I looked 1189 emails that are not read yet I'm really sorry I am backlogged I'm trying to plug through them so please forgive me if you sent me an email and I haven't got to it I am so swamped I'm really trying to catch up uh, if you have, if, if, the best way to really reach me is through the forum. 
If you've got some really good ideas or suggestions, or if you need personal help, come over to the forum because that is there. See, when I put up a video, especially if I put up two, three videos in a day, I'm only on it for that day, the next 24 hours, and then I got to move on to the next video. So it's really hard to keep up. And if we start a thread somewhere, I'll never find it again. So the forum, um, I'll put the link down below, but go on over to the forum www.thediyworld.com uh, slash forum. Anyway, go on over there if you've got advice or you need personal help with some things like solar, off-grid living, or whatever. And it's not just me there. I think there's something like 21,000 members on the forum. If you scroll down to the very bottom, you can see the list of activities and how many people are there and, and everything. Anyway, go on over and use the forum. It's there for you. And it's a, it's a great community that's troll-free. And I know it is because I have full and absolute control over the forum in every way, shape, and form. Not like the comments, so I'm sorry about that. Um, I haven't been doing any a lot of video recently, so I apologize. I have not been really lazy. I have just been actually, quite the contrary, quite active. But I've been running the roads and out and about. I'm working on the barn wood, trying to sort out barn wood. And... I'll, I'll probably show you that in the future time. Right now what I'm doing is laying it all in piles based on um, the type of wood or whatever, like all the all the barn siding are growing in one pile, all the 2x6s in another pile, 2x4s in another, and, and, and so on. And then I'm going to put them on pallets with branches or something or twigs, I don't know, something underneath, just like the pros do at the lumber yards to keep them, keep air flowing and keep them from rotting. So I've been out there a lot working on that and hopefully I'm going to get some barn wood in here soon to finish the upstairs with. I want to use barn siding on the upstairs walls and hopefully I'll do that soon. Now another reason I haven't been around is um, my friend Tech Man with the numbers behind it, 12, 19 or whatever, I'll, I'll put his link on here. Tech Man has decided to help me get batteries for the tiny house. He got frustrated with my my limping along gar golf cart batteries and said please please get new batteries. So I spent half the day yesterday up until 12 o'clock last night researching batteries and I spent all day today so far it's 3.30 in the afternoon and I spent the entire day today studying and researching batteries and have come to my decision. I found a forklift battery that I am going to get and so thank you Tech Man for the help um, a donation to make that possible. It's going to take a guy a couple of days to get me that battery prepared. I'm going to go have to drive down to get it. It's going to be a long drive. I will have a forklift battery here at the tiny house on wheels very soon. It is 600 pounds, 600 pound forklift battery. They stand about this tall and they're made of individual 2 volt cells and anybody in off-grid living will tell you that 2 volt cells are the best way to go. Individual 2 volt cells are the best way to go. If one fails, you replace it. If you have a battery with multiple cells in it, and it's an enclosed sealed thing and a cell fails, it's done. That's it. So I have uh, also studied a lot and learned that golf cart batteries are off-grid learners batteries. Off -grid golf cart batteries are considered learners batteries. Um, most of the forums and sites I've read and studied have said as a off-grid full-time beginner, like I have been, I've, I, I've studied off-grid living almost my entire life, but really truly living off the grid full time uh, has been only about two and a half, three years. As a beginner, you will mess up your batteries. They say that. Um, everybody says it. You're going to mess up. You're going to make mistakes as a beginner off the grid. Uh, there might be some people out there who don't. Hey, there's always exceptions. But anyway, those advanced auto batteries had from my studies roughly a two year lifespan, which I didn't know uh, previously. They can last four to five years, but that's about it. 
I'm going to try to desulfate them and keep them going. Sorry I'm squinting, the sun has peeked out right directly in my eyes. So forgive me about that, part of the reason I got the hat on indoors. The uh, forklift batteries will last 15 to 20 years if cared for properly and nothing else can touch that. I was looking on uh, one f site that showed you the price per kilowatt hour over the life of the battery. Forklift batteries were the cheapest total overall. So just explain that's what I've been up to and thank you again Tech Man. I will be mentioning you in the next couple days, hope you're not shy. But uh, when the battery arrives that's going to be a very very exciting day for the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project and the tiny house on wheels. Well everybody, um, after the sun goes down I do have some projects going on with lighting and rewiring stuff so Hopefully we'll get to that later on. Right now I've got to get back out and start working on some barn wards. So see you later.